Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. And today we are continuing with our country series looking specifically at South Africa. If you're interested in our other country series on the channel, you can check them out here. I'll make sure to also link them in the description below as usual. But today we're looking at South Africa and in this video we are going to continue with looking at the current migration situation in the country today. If you're interested in the history of migration in the country or the migration policy and governance, you can check out those other videos here and I'll of course make sure to link them in the description below. Now let's look at what's going on in South Africa today. South Africa has a particularly interesting uh, migration position within Africa due to its geoeconomic factors and its relative stability. We do see South Africa as a major migrant receiving country in the region. The Republic of South Africa is a country in in sub-Saharan Africa. It's a founding member of the Southern African Development Community. In terms of geography, it is bordered by Botswana and Zimbabwe in the north and Swaziland in the east and Mozambique in the northeast. It is also a country that surrounds another completely independent country that is Lesotho, which is situated in the Middle Eastern province. Additionally, South Africa also possesses a coastline with the Indian Ocean on the southeast and the Atlantic Ocean on the southwest. It does have a kind of interesting geographic position. Its geographic location and strong economic position are of central importance in influencing migrants decisions to choose South Africa as a country of destination. Of course, South Africa is also one of the richest and most prosperous countries in Africa today. It also has general political stability in the country it's, and it's played a leading role um, and a leading stabilizing role in the region with its transition to a democracy and a multi-party system in 1994. And of course, there's also been political unrest in neighboring countries, particularly in Mozambique and Zimbabwe. And these have also been key determinants of migra certain migrant populations moving to South Africa. Now let's look at the migrant stocks in South Africa today. So, of course, if you're interested in the difference between migrant stocks and migrant flows, you can check out my video on that here. Here, we're looking at the number of migrants specifically in South Africa in a given year. Here you can see between 1990 and 2020, uh, the number of international migrants in South Africa. We saw a peak in 2015 with over 3 million international migrants in the country. According to UNDESA, in 2020, South Africa hosted around 2.8 million migrants. Of those 2.8 million migrants, around 93% of them were from uh, other parts of sub-Saharan Africa. So South Africa is a very important destination country for African migrants. Its high level of industrialization and its leading economy attracts a large population of migrants in search of better social, economic, and political opportunities in general, particularly from Africa. Here we can see the major origins of African migrants to South Africa. Um, we can see Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Lesotho, and Malawi are really important source countries for migrants. But at the same time, we also see um, the United Kingdom also rounding out the top six with regard to uh, um, where migrants are coming from. Here we can see now the flows of migrants coming into South Africa in a given year, and this is the net number of migrants in South Africa in a given year. So if we see a number below zero, that means that there were more people leaving South Africa. If we see a number above zero, that's more people entering South Africa. And what is very clear is that from the early 1990s on, South Africa is definitely a net immigration country, meaning more people are entering the country than leaving the country. However, there is also emigration from South Africa or people who do leave South Africa. And the top destination countries for South African migrants are the United Kingdom, Australia, the United States, New Zealand, and Canada. So while most of the immigration into South Africa is actually from other African countries, most of the emigration is outside of Africa. There's actually a large amount of internal migration in South Africa, and we, we see higher numbers of internal migrants than we do of international migrants. So also the majority of internal migration in South Africa is to Gauteng and to the Western Cape, 
which are South Africa's uh, most prosperous economic hubs, which makes sense. This can be seen most clearly in 2016, where internal immigration to these locations was more than five times higher than the local population. So this also goes to show how important internal migration is in the country. So some factors that have contributed to South Africa's internal migration include differences in uh, relative differences in economic opportunities in different parts of the country. In comparison to many of South Africa's bordering neighbors, most of the dynamics that we see within South Africa with regard to migration really have to do with the pursuit of different kinds of economic prospects. That's not to say that there's no other types of forced migration in the country, but a lot of it really is driven by economic opportunities. Immigrants also do contribute considerably to South Africa's economy. The opportunities available in semi-skilled labor in South Africa include sectors such as construction, mining, and services. South Africa also attracts highly skilled labor in financial services. We have seen also that the mining sector is a Im particularly important sector for immigrant labor, with up to 40 or 50 percent of the workforce in that area also coming from immigrant labor. Now, immigrants in general, so this is international migrants now, contribute considerably to South Africa's economy. Um, a study done by the OECD and the ILO in 2018 showed how immigrants in South Africa have made a positive impact on jobs and wages in South Africa between 1996 and 2011. The results actually showed that the economic contribution of immigrant workers amounts to around 9% of GDP, and they also make up around 9% of the employed workforce. Now, if we look at irregular migration in the country, we do know that irregular migration is an issue in South Africa. According to the 2011 census, there were 2.2 million irregular migrants, but other estimates by migration scholars show the number to be higher above 3 million. Of course, it's very difficult to actually measure and to estimate the number of irregular migrants, but we do know it is probably somewhere closer to 3 million international irregular irregular migrants. Now there are a number of ways in which of course someone can be irregular. There is unlawful entry and unlawful stay. There is lawful entrance but unlawful stay and there is also unlawful entry but lawful stayer. So there are a number of ways in which of course people can become irregular in the country. It's hard to estimate the number of irregular migrants in the country but of course we can say something about it, the number of people who have been detained at borders or who have been caught by officials. So again, irregular migration is something that is difficult to measure, but one of the ways in which we can measure this is by those people who have been caught or detained or also deported. So one way of course to gain an understanding of this is to look at those people who have been deported. And around 15,000 migrants were deported in 2017 alone for not having the right to stay in South Africa. The most common nationalities of migrants um, who had been deported in 2014 were Malawians, Zimbabweans, uh, Mozambicans, Tanzanians, and Nigerians. But we do see other from other countries in South Africa. Here you can also see a graph of the nationalities of people who were deported between 1990 and 1997. So this was also data from some time ago. But we pr the countries are probably very similar today since these are also some of the main um, countries of origin for migrants in South Africa today. So South Africa is a host to refugees and asylum seekers. Here we can see also uh, the number of refugees in 2015 and where they're coming from. So we see also the majority of refugees from Somalia and uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, but of course also a few other countries here. If we look at more recent statistics on refugees, here we see between 2016 and 2019, the number of refugees that were hosted in South Africa. Here you can also see the number of um, refugees over time since 1993 
till 2019. So there was a larger number of people in 1993, 1994. Then we saw a more serious drop and a slight increase now more in modern day. So South Africa's recognition of asylum claims is among the lowest actually in the world at just 5% in 2006 compared to 68% in Canada, 43% in the US in that same year. So the recognition of asylum claims is generally much lower in South Africa. According to UNHCR, there were around 26,000 asylum applications in South Africa in 2019. Of these asylum applications, um, only 8% were accepted and 92% were rejected. So again, quite low rates of uh, acceptance in South Africa. So with South Africa being a major migrant hosting country, there are, they are also an important country for remittance sending. Again, so remittances are generally the money that migrants send back to their families and to their countries of origin. If you're, more, if you're interested to learn more about remittances, you can check out my video on remittances here. I'll also link a few more down in the description below. Remittances are a major source of development or are a major source of you know helping with poverty alleviation, consumption smoothing, and much, much more across the Southern African region, um, and a major source of development finance also um, across Africa. So South Africa is one of the major remittance sending countries with over a billion being sent in remittances from South Africa in 2019. So some of the main uh, um, corridors which have been identified as major recipients include Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Lesotho, and Botswana. So here you can see South Africa's remittance trends between 1990 and 2020. And this is from uh, both remittances that were sent and remittances that were received. South Africa is still an important remittance receiving country also, but you can see that remittances sent are much more, are still more than remittances received and have been gaining importance over time. So if we look at the current day situation in uh, South Africa day with regard to migration, South Africa has some of the most progressive laws in the world, but it does fall short often with regard to implementations. With, with implementation. There are definitely high levels of corruption in South Africa that seriously impede South Africa's successful migration governance. There has also been a strong xenophobic sentiment that makes South Africa an inhospitable environment for many foreigners, as has been evidenced by the xenophobic and violent outbreaks in 2008, 2015, and 2019, which left thousands dead or homeless and tensions have also heightened has been have been heightened because of economic stagnation in the country. So while South Africa is an important migrant receiving country in Africa, there is of course still more that can be done with regard to uh, protections and strengthening also migration policy and governance in the country. However, it is a very important player in the region and does attract a lot of migrants as well as having a lot of internal migration in the country too, particularly to the economic hubs within the country. So I hope this country series now just gave you um, a quick understanding of the migration situation in South Africa today. Again, of course, feel free to look at the other videos on the history of migration in the country and policy and governance, and check out our other videos in the country series. Please do give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that I upload every week. And of course, if you're interested to learn more about South Africa, I always make sure to put all of the references and sources in the description. I do hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.